Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Age Out Reacts with the two hosts of the Age Out Podcast, Mike Fantini and Evan Worrell. And today we have a solid video from Vigilantes. It's a war lot warm up video from I think it's this past weekend when it happened. Um, I've been I've seen their show. Have you? Uh, you have too, right? Yeah, I saw. Yeah, it. we watched the um, what was was it Dallas? Yeah, Dallas. Come yeah, I think, escape. Yeah, I watched uh, prelims. You watched finals, and. All I'll say before we get into this is, well, first, subscribe, comment, like, what do you think of the Vigilantes? If you like what we say, not disagree, agree. Um, Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, hit the join button on YouTube here, support us financially for 99 cents a month, help us cover travel costs and equipment costs for uh, making this whole thing happen. And now that we did that, Vigilantes this year from seeing the show is it's just kind of similar to last year in the sense of they play really well for the part for how new of a group they are. Mm -hmm. And I don't say that in a negative way. I say that in a, they're pretty good, considering they drum pretty well, considering they haven't been around very long. Yeah, Texas has been littered with talent for a long time. Um, just there hadn't always been three prominent independent world groups until the last couple of years. So, yep. So yeah. looking forward to this. Uh, saw a little five minute lot video. We'll see what's going on. Give some comments and then uh, see where it goes. Isolated doubles are hard. Oh, the multiple high moms. Yeah. So, before I let the quads play this dreadlock segment here, there's a lot of stick trick action going on in there, and the one thing I give them was the phrase perfect, no. And we are going to talk about clarity at this point. Finals are in three weeks. Yeah. Um, was it perfect? No. Was the sound quality good? Yes. And the one thing I'll point out that's tough to do is when you have back sticks and high moms like there wasn't much of a sound quality drop off when they played those back sticks or high moms, which means if they're playing it together, they're still hitting the drum the right way. And a lot of groups will, you'll hear a fall off, a noticeable difference. And you're going to hear a little bit of a one, no matter what with those stick tricks and things, but they handle yeah, that just stuff. Less well. weight behind the stroke. Yeah. But it's a sign of a um, mature snare line that it sounds still pretty solid when they're doing back sticks and high moms and stuff like that. I wish this was slightly more centered for the audio, yeah. but we appreciate what we have. Yeah. Dreadlocks and wires are such a hard implement to play with. Mm -hmm. Such a broad sound. Good bass drum tuning. Mm -hmm. the muffling action there. Doom. Doom. It's a good snare strokes. to quad blend. On the rolls, especially. Seven strokes, sorry. Yeah. Stroke. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to back up and replay that phrase, or most of it, because there's a lot of rolls within the, the flat lines, and they're blended really well. They have the a mature support. blended um, across the quads and snare sound. Base support behind it. Yep. One thing you noted too, uh, just from like the show itself, um, you were pointing out that it feels like they're doing a lot more choreography this year than uh, than they were last year. Very few kind of stagnant or complacent moments visually. Yeah, there's a whole I will say lot they more do body. Run, Dude, probably their drill, too, too their much. drill's hard. <laughs> it, I, I, after we wa after I watched prelims, I was like, well, they're doing way more body than last year. The show <laughs> is a step in the right direction away from being like the stock drums in a gym like trope of indoor drumline if that makes sense and they're doing a lot more body so they're moving more into that indoor paradigm but their drill is it almost reminds me of indoor drill from like 10 years ago groups ran around the floor a lot more it's when like you and i were we, marching or yeah, before that too it's like what we did at rhythm x in 2010 we just ran i was like man 
Can I get some choreo? <laughs> I Can we get a stage still. moment? Do some body? Yeah. Yeah. Good transition from the, uh, the spot. Check it, check it. duple to triple. I like the bass drum tuning a lot. I think it speaks really well. Mm, take your shindo, build it back up. Edge stick control work. The roughs started to get a little more separated as we got louder. Yeah, in the phrase. when they crescendoed, they got a little wider. Mm -hmm. And I, so I will say overall, Some so balance. far. Uh, yeah, it mainly sounded a lot of, like a lot of balance stuff going on there. But the more we go through this, I feel Sorry, like they're can you hear that... my crunching. I don't know. Okay, okay. maybe a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I will say that overall, they're at the point from a clarity standpoint of the season where the base of the of the clarity package is there. Like it's mostly clean in the macro phrases, and you'll just hear double strokes stick out or like. The drags got a little wide from player to player as they crescendoed that phrase there a second ago. And it's the part of the season where the approach is pretty uniform from player to player and the clarity baseline is there. So it makes that little stuff like, I think you mentioned that in our last video we did with, um, who did we do last? Oh, I can't even remember. Infinity. Infinity, yeah. That one. <laughs> where things get clearer and then they get dirtier. Actually. Exactly. So the little ticks are sticking out a lot, but it's... A good thing in your path to perfection or the pursuit and of perfection finishing a season is is hard like the groups who really jump up just they know how to push to the end and, and finish out and, and build to the very end yep it is a skill these notes seem like they're comfy to play yeah they feel like they it sound like they feel good in the hands There's always something been hold on wait a second. Dude, so a lot of momentum to this book. This book, yeah. the writing sounds. It just the, seems like it flows so like naturally. Dude, the bass support writing is very tasty, and then uh -huh. da -da 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 through all those like uh, just rhythm changes and stuff. The, the, the stick control stuff, the mm -hmm. same hand flam singles or whatever you want to call them. I'm going to back up because I would, did, was not paying attention to the bass support when they were doing that. Yeah, it's really cool. Just gives the snare drum a little more depth. I like the, uh, it was almost like they weren't, they had tap rolls in there mixed in with like open fives, if that makes sense. Or like open, like, I don't even know how you even, what you even call like that. Like instead of a tap, like instead of the tap space uh, of like a triplet roll, like a slurred five. Yes. Thank you. That's the word. I couldn't find it. But yeah, you can tell that the bass support, like you were saying on that phrase, is very subtle. They're a background, they're, they're background to the featured snare line in that moment. But it adds just a little more intrigue to the writing of the phrase. Like hitting the hitting the bass drum with that crash cymbal on drum set. Like if you hit the crash cymbal by itself, it's like it's a little harsh. But if you warm it up a little bit, it just gives it a little more oomph. There it is. <laughs> That's a terrible analogy, but hey, man, we'll go with it. I'll roll with it.
I'm not going to lean into this too hard versus how on the side we are, but that first Bach roll was really good. I was going to say, the phrase deteriorated <laughs> in terms of clarity the farther into it they got, but it definitely started really well and yeah. very clean. It's kind of on the side here, like 20 feet away. That was a pretty good ending. Though. Yeah, the ending was solid. All kinds of crossover craziness. Somebody else said this, and I completely agree, but those carriers suck for Endor. <laughs> those dynasty carriers. They have been the They're sturdy as all get out. You can run across them. Been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, but they are not aesthetically pleasing. So this next phrase I just backed up to restart. The bit, there's a, a cool little bass run lead into it, but they also go back to some splits like or some notes on the rims or the shooters or clickers, whatever you want to call them, on the bass drums. They had a whole opening to their bass feature earlier in this video splitting on the rims like that. And, and I think it's a really cool texture. I, I remember the part of the show where that is, and it, it works really well. You have to go watch the show with what the front's doing when the bass line's doing that, and then they move to the drums, and it makes the drums stick out even more, if that makes sense. But they use that texture a few times, and I like it a lot. It's definitely soft, and uh, mm -hmm. softer and less boomy than the, the actual head. Yep. More articulate. Mm -hmm. Short sound. drum machine. Good timing on like the split singles out of the space. A lot of like the high end isolated diddles are just Gets still away from them. The, yeah. Yep. That was good. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. That hand speed change in the middle of that roll is handled pretty well. Yeah, and just the, yep. to open the rhythms and then get to the big zoom, zoom, zoom while the bass fills in. Just control that space and everything. So you said it a second ago. One of the things they struggle with the most, I feel like, are just honestly not full rolls, just isolated double strokes. They have yeah. a lot of them, whether it's drag figures, like roughs or whatever, or just literally just an isolated double. Like that just seems to be something. Probably like above like the mezzo forte. Yeah, or if a higher volume. Height, it's probably like above the six inches when you're starting to really like move the arm and and that's just not having right to it. me uniform hand pressure player to player to let this to let the double stroke be open enough to be in time and yep so just like last year i like i like what they're doing i liked mm -hmm. the book last year the drumming was solid i will not give away we'll do our finals predictions yeah. podcast yeah uh all i Which... will say is i do think they will make finals again on um... their playing quality which is kind of what happened last year as well I'm not and saying I don't, anything. Again, that's positive yet. to me. They play well, but I'm not, I'm not saying anything yet. So what we're gonna do is we're compiling two lists of thirty first through first, and we're not even gonna share them with each other until we do the recording. Minus <laughs> me just saying that I had not told Evan that before, but now he knows one of my finalist predictions. I didn't well, say where the in the top fifteen though. Uh, yeah. Again, I like what they're doing. The show's a step in the right direction, design wise. In the indoor realm, doing a lot more body this year. Uh, I think they're at a good, solid clarity clarity spot for where they are competitively in independent world. And they're only going to get cleaner with playing in that Texas weather, rehearsing down there, getting outside every weekend. And I'm excited to see them at finals, for like sure. last year. Yep. So again, hit the join button on YouTube, subscribe, comment, like, check out the podcast, podcast services, Facebook, Instagram, and we will see everybody in the next one. Peace.